Hi, Todd of Todd Stuff here, and today we're going to have a quick talk about this windless bow and the projectiles that it shoots. Um, there's quite a lot to say, but I'll try and keep it short as I can. So, this bow here, uh, 976 pounds in draw weight. Um, it's actually made for the YouTuber Scalagrim. Uh, he'll be taking it and doing some testing with it. He'll be doing all sorts of things, distance, shooting at plate armour, shooting cloth armour, zombie heads, all the stuff that Scal does. Um, be very entertaining and uh, go and have a look what he does with it. But he's asked me to make some various crossbow bolts for him to use. Now, this is sort of an absolute standard medieval style crossbow bolt. So you've got an ash shaft, you've got wooden flights, you've got a tapered butt here that fits between the, the teeth of the nut, you've got a four faceted quarrel head, um, hand forged by Hector Cole, lovely pieces. Weighing in around about 90, 92 grams, something like that. Now, <clears throat> what's very notable about these, of course, is you've got wooden flights on them, uh, not feathers. Now, for crossbow bolts, military applications, wooden flights are standard. Um, basically, you can leave it in a museum, in a, a castle. Um, you can leave it 50 years, 100 years. Even now, there are still racks of bolts in some castles, which you could pick up and shoot. You can't do that with feathers. If we look at this uh, longbow arrow here, this is maybe 10 years old. This is absolutely degraded and worn, and that's not through shooting. That's just some sort of mite or bug that's around that just eats the feathers away. So as a magazine uh, ammunition, arrows need to be replenished, they need to be repaired. That's not true for crossbow bolts if you fletch them in wood. Now obviously you can't fletch a, an arrow in wood because the flights passing past the bow wouldn't work, but you can do it on a longbow arrow on oh, no, a crossbow bolt, sorry. Now the flights will lose around one or two percent distance by being wood over feather, um, from my tests. Uh, so it's not a significant loss. Now what is also very interesting, if you can see it, is those flights are not straight, which is what you might expect. They're actually like a wing section. Um, they're not even straight and helical, which is sort of like your next expectation. Um, they're actually curved. Now, <clears throat> I've got some thoughts on why that would be the case, but anyway, the bottom line is that these things spin beautifully. Um, I've, there's another video I've done of me shooting a 1,250 pound windless bow, um, and there's some slow-mo shots in that where you can really see the bolt spinning the moment it leaves the, the stock. Um, so they work very well. The head itself is four-faceted, just like you would expect on a longbow arrow. However, what's curious is that the longbow arrow section is square, whereas it's diamond section on crossbow quarrels. Why they did that, I don't know. Um, but what it does do is it maintains the reason for these four faces, which is that they cut the steel. So basically, if you tried to shoot um, a round point through steel, it can't cut the steel, it has to stretch it and deform it out of the way. And that takes considerably more energy than it does to actually cut it. So these sort of uh, heads will make four cuts and peel the steel back and it, it's a lower energy way of penetrating so you'll get a deeper penetration off it. That said I think it's fair to say that uh, most people are coming to the conclusion now that, that bolts and arrows didn't really generally pass through armour. There might have been the odd occasion they did when the armour was, was weak or poor quality um, but essentially as a rule of thumb if you had any money to buy decent armour arrows and bolts didn't penetrate it. Uh, okay, so then the next one that Scal asked me to do, again another Hector Cole head, uh, is a needle bodkin. Um, I've not seen crossbow bolts with needle bodkins on, I'm sure they did, uh, but because of the length of it, it made it rather interesting trying to get this thing to balance. Um, but anyway, we've got there. Uh, so again, absolute monster, weighing in again around about 90 grams. Um, so I'm sure Scow will do some serious unpleasant damage to something with that. And the last one was rather curious. So uh, I was asked to make a broadhead. Now I've not fitted a large broadhead onto a, a heavy bolt before for a heavy bow. So I commissioned Hector to, um, to make, weight for weight, another, uh, it's about 60 odd grams, broadhead. Uh, I just thought, well, that'll be fine. Actually, on an arrow, it would be fine because the length seems to control it. But over, with a crossbow bolt, because of the shortness of the bolt, 
I put this on, I shot it, and literally over 15 metres, it went 50, 60 centimetres off centre. It, it swooped and doved and turned. And it really was like a, a bird in flight going for it, a swift or something. And there is just no way that you can shoot that thing straight. It doesn't, because the bolt head steers the bolt, not the bolt steering the, the bolt head. Um, so I had to move to a lighter broadhead, um, considerably lighter. So this bolt weighs in, uh, I don't know, about 45 grams, something like that. Um, which actually I was quite surprised it worked at all, but it does. Works very well. Um, so that one goes like lightning and uh, is obviously rather pointy and unpleasant. Last thing I'd like to do is to talk about the bolt heads. Now, uh, talking about the metallurgy of it, these are mild steel. They're about 0.2% carbon, um, which is, it's not raw iron, but it's not steel steel. So anything from about 0.4 up is, is beginning to look a bit more interesting. Now, obviously the harder the steel, the better you're gonna have a, a cutting ability on the heads. Uh, historically, we're just not sure what they did, actually. There are references to steeled heads in the manuscripts. What steeled head is, we are not quite sure. Presumably it's a process because they don't refer to it as steel, they refer to it as steeled. Uh, so it's some sort of process, whether that process is turning iron into steel or my personal belief is that they were probably case hardened because they could case harden. It's very suited to, to mass production, you know, thousand bolt heads in a box or whatever. Uh, they could do it, they knew how to do it. <coughs> it's cheap to do. Um, and it's effective. And for basically what is a one-use item, case hardening would be perfect. Uh, now, onto the subject of one-use item. Basically, wooden fletches are relatively delicate compared to feathers. Um, the shafts themselves have a hell of a lot of abuse, especially if they don't hit square or they hit a slightly angled um, object, which is hard. Uh, this needle bodkin again, for instance, is very long, so um, you know the leverage on here is going to be very large. So the bottom line is there's got to be an expectation these are not going to last that well. Um, they're going to they're going to do their thing for a little bit, but if you shoot that at steel, it will break. Uh, might not the first one, might not the second, but you know you're not going to be shooting at steel all day with these uh, and expect them to go. So for that reason, I've actually sent a load of spare shafts to Scalagrim anyway. Um, so you can have a play around. Um, for longevity, probably fletching with feathers is going to be an easier thing, but uh, he will discover all these joys of um, historical bolt ownership in due course. Right, so let's shoot this thing and find out what kind of projectile speeds and uh, energies we get off it. Right, that is 157. 157. Uh, right, let's go do some maths. So, uh, just to finish off now on the maths, we've uh, shot the bow on the chronograph. We got a speed uh, out of the bow of 157 feet per second. Now, uh, I'm in the UK, we're completely mixed up with metric and imperial over here. I happen to do speeds in metric. So I'm going to convert the 157 feet per second into meters per second. Now, to do that, I simply multiply uh, the 157 feet per second by 0 0.3048. That will give you the meters per second. And now I use the formula as I normally would. So what you've got then is um, the, the converted speed of 157 actually becomes 47.9 meters per second. Uh, we're going to square that. So uh, if we square it, that's going to give us the next number, which is 2294. We're going to divide that by the mass. That's the mass of the bolt in kilos. I weigh it in grams, but then you have to convert to kilos. Kilos is 0.096. 0.096, that is the mass, and then we're going to divide the whole lot by 2, and the net result at the end of that is 110 joules. Um, point of comparison, a 9mm pistol bullet is around about 400 to 450 joules um, in energy, so about a quarter of that. 
Uh, there you go. State of the art killing weapon, circa 1450, 110 joules. Thank you very much.